right. So thanks for taking the time. Thank you very much, Dennis, for having me. Um, so where do you want to start? Because there's a thousand places we can go, but and you're on your third election. Um, and the typical question is, is it fun? And you were just chatting that, well, you know, maybe not the case. Yeah, no, uh, everybody's just to have fun with them. I, I've never had fun ever since being elected. Um, I'm very honored. I'm very privileged to represent a riding in, in the province of New Brunswick. And I'm very proud to represent the people of Fredericton North, including Nashwaxis, Devon. And let's not forget the First Nations community of St. Mary's that most people do forget. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 365-day a, a year job. It's 24-7. Um, is it imperative that, that people live in the riding? I don't think it's imperative, but I think it's very important. Uh, because when you're out at the local gas bar or when you're out <laughs> shopping at the local grocery store, I mean, I've run into you a couple of times, you ask me questions. Hmm. And and for people who don't live in the riding, I think I'm the only candidate in Frederick North that lives in the riding. Um, and you'll see me 365 days a year. Um, the only time I, I get a break and is, is I have to leave the province because if I don't, my personality is I'll continue to work. <laughs> um, it, that's just who I am. I've worked on Christmas days before. Uh, mm -hmm. I've worked on New Year's days. Mm -hmm. um, I have that nature of uh, having still the neighborhood police officer in me. Walking, being very highly visible and very highly accessible. Yeah, well, a six four will do it. Yeah, no, well, <laughs> and that, that look, I, I think that helps uh, as as a police officer. You know, I know you talk to the other uh, candidates here. Um, yeah. your, your presence is the first thing that people see. Yeah, uh, and that's very important. And and then your voice, your your command of your voice, whether it's authoritative or whether it's calming, hmm. that's your second presence. Yeah. So again, having the police background that I have had and helping the the, the community here. Uh, we settled uh, a lot of lot of disputes. Yeah. It, it's sort of not an election issue, but it's very much part of your background. When you suggest, you know, the the police background, law enforcement background, um, that doesn't touch New Brunswick the way it touches the United States or some of the bigger cities. Right. But you know, our population watches a lot of American TV, so that public will carry some of that angst, even though it doesn't happen in our mm -hmm. like New Brunswick's such a safe place <laughs> by comparison to anything you're getting through the media. But it might be law enforcement wears that a little bit or how the public will confuse, you know, things in the states with what goes on here. Do you want to wander into that space? Because public sure. safety isn't kind of a, a big issue, but it is. But it is. <laughs> it's, it's, and I was very disappointed in this past government. Uh, Carl Urquhart and I have worked uh, together for, I, I've worked uh, 25 years. He's worked 30 years plus maybe at the Fredericton City Police Department. I'm very proud to do so. Um, so safety has always been a concern of mine, and that's why I'm very proud that the to have gotten the roundabout at Two Nations Crossing in after 15 years of, of pushing and pushing. I, I made it happen because it's a safety issue, yeah. and we we wanted the second one done here at Brookside Drive and 105. That's a tough intersection. It, it's it's the worst intersection in the city, and for this government to have canceled it, and they they say postpone it, but it's it's been it was canceled. Um, that needed to be done to keep people safe. Mm -hmm. uh, it affected more than just Frederick North Riding. It affected Frederick New York and uh, Frederick and Grand Lake, uh, anybody who uses that area. Um, so safety is a concern. Uh, you, you talked to, to the other candidates about the, it, it was talked about the front license plates. Look, is that a big thing? No, but it's an important thing. It's an important thing to police departments. And one thing that I think that I'm very proud of is I like to consult with people. I like to educate myself. So when I was Minister of Public Safety, that issue was brought up as well, I think between 2014 and 2016. Hmm. And there's technology coming. I think it's in the States now. I know it's in Connecticut, uh, that a police officer for a car are approaching it without a front plate, somehow they can uh, tell who the registered owner is, who the vehicle belongs to, where they live, etc. It's like facial recognition for cars. It, it's something like that. Vehicles. Yeah. Yep. So that was coming. And usually uh, I've seen uh, crime. I'll use crime, for example. It always happens in the States. And for some reason, it goes to British Columbia and works its way east. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, the, the crime skips from Quebec to Nova Scotia. I think it's because of population. And then comes back into New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. And I think this is, this would happen. Uh, so we were waiting for that technology to come here. Uh, police officers did not want to see the, lo the loss of the front license plate. For Mr. Minister Urquhart at the time say he's never solved, and he said this publicly, so I can say it, uh, he says he's never solved a crime using front plates. <laughs> I, I don't want to, he, he was a good police officer. Um, 
I've, I've, I've solved a lot of crime and a lot of police officers come to me and say, look, we used a lot of uh, technology in front place to solve a lot of crime. And as a matter of fact, three or four just happened in the last little while mm -hmm. that if they did have their front license plates, that crime could have been solved days ahead of time, which, which it comes to public safety. Mm -hmm. And the loss of the uh, contraband tobacco unit, mm -hmm. which cost $900,000 to this province, but it brought in four times as much and saved the province four times as much in taxes mm -hmm. of the cigarettes. Uh, so it was not only paying for itself, it was keeping us safer. It was taking legal tobacco off the streets, not only here in New Brunswick, because it was, it was also helping Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland, because New Brunswick was the thoroughway for that uh, legal tobacco. That is coming from um, uh, criminal, criminal organizations. So you're taking guns off the illegal guns, prostitution, uh, you know, saving women, uh, many things. And, and I was very disheartening it to see politics play a role in that. And I say it before, I'm probably the least political person in, mm. in, in, in the legislature right now. Mm. If it's a great idea, I, I'm all for it. And, and, and Minister Urquhart at the time has come up with some good things that we had worked on as well, but I wish we got through, mm -hmm. but he did. And I applaud him for that. Um, it's about it's about keeping us safe. We are we do live in a safe region. I'm not trying to scare people, but we mm -hmm. do live in a safe region comparable to other locations, uh, and that's why people want to move to New Brunswick. Yeah. Good education, good housing, good affordable housing, and uh, uh, safety. Yeah, and we want to keep it that way. Hundred percent. Sort of on that same theme, but slightly lighter, um, is that uh, New, Brun New Brunswick's kind of the nicest place you never saw. It's a riff on, you know, the pass-through province. Mm -hmm. um, it might be we've arrived in that moment in time where this is a really good thing for us um, because we, especially during the, the COVID pandemic, mm -hmm. um, some of the economic shifts, if we can tweak some things, um, New Brunswick's very much the place to be, um, but no one knows it's there. <laughs> Look, 100%. <laughs> which, which, and there's the dilemma, right? It's a tourism ad thing where... Um, you know, you meet people on the trail and you hear the New York accents and you're going, you know, down Funding National Park. How did you, why are you here? And they're, oh, we love it here because no one knows it's here. Yeah. And, and But there's a lot of truth in that because we're about to make a leap of some sort, one way or the other, into new technologies and a new approach to large-scale decision-making. I mean, we have to. Um, but so how do we retain the integrity of our province and its, its wonderfulness? Yeah. While while the rest of the world kind of is kind of they have to catch up with where we are because we were so far behind. We're actually going to make a leap ahead. Yeah. If that makes sense. It's no, cliche, I say, but but you see that in safety. You have a very unique lens on our province through your experiences. Look, I, I think uh, you've, you've hit it right on the head and I'm, I'm ashamed and I'll, I'll be the first one to say, look, I haven't seen all the regions of this province. I've seen most of it. Yeah. But um, Mount Carlton. I've never been to the region of Mount Carlton. I'm ashamed to say that. I've climbed Mount Katahdin 15 times. Um, <laughs> you're a good Canadian boy. No, you're, you're absolutely, you're absolutely <laughs> we right. We always go to the States. <laughs> no, we, uh, we started going down because of 911. When 911, 9-11 uh, uh, happened, uh, yeah. uh, we, we climbed the highest peak in the States for to help promote policing. And that's how we why started going to Mount Katahdin. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. And, and I'll use a perfect example of what's right here in Fredericton, the Fredericton area, Clarny Lake. Yep. <laughs> People don't realize what a gem that is, and I wish it was in my riding because I think I would like to see it fixed up even more uh, with the, with the trail system there, uh, with the, in the winter time using the cross country skiing, the swimming of the lake, uh, the beach. I would like to see clean better up a little sand, bit, better sand, you know, and and why not have a, an ice cream stand there or some kind of stand, that, you know, promoting it. But it's the it's the one of the best kept secrets in Fredericton is Clarny Lake area. Yeah. Um, so our province is full of those Clarny Lakes, uh, and maybe that's one of the good things that we could say about COVID is that it kept people within our province, yeah. within the Maritimes, and uh, we're getting to see uh, what's here right in our backyards. Hmm. So I, I would like to see. I think you know keeping that up and, and investing, not not spending, investing in tourism. Uh, as you know, every dollar spent and in, invested in uh, tourism, we get three points some odd back. And to cut 40% yeah. of tourism, that's jobs. That's summertime, so you know, university kids and, and high school kids, uh, jobs. Yeah. Uh, it really hurt. And, uh, and I'll use a, a perfect example of the, the funny trail you had just mentioned. We were very proud to invest $46 million in 2016-17 area into the funny trail to have it completed. And unfortunately, we weren't the government that got to open it. 
but I went uh, because I was very proud to have been in government. Uh, Frank McKenna was there along with some other people. Uh, and they were very proud to say this is the, and from Mr. Higgs's, uh, Premier Higgs's words, this is the Cabot Trail of New Brunswick. And what did he do with the very, not, and he knew the day before he announced that, how wonderful this is. Bruce Northrup, the Minister of Tourism was there, or sorry, um, he was the MLA for the region. Yep. And Bruce uh, Fitch, the Minister of Tourism there, how wonderful it is. And we're into tourism and this is going to, you know, bring people here. And the very next day or the day after, they, they cut the rest of the, the project. That's, that's so frustrating. Yep. And general public will also put you right in the middle of that stuff. Yeah. You know, because it's like, why can't those politicians get their act together and treat us all the same? And that might be the cusp of change that we're on, because voting used to be something has changed in the voting patterns. Somehow. Mm -hmm. The numbers are still not where they need to be, the overall volume. But what the voter is motivated by seems to have shifted a little bit. Right. Um, and and to hear you speak frankly that way is is helpful because it gives the voter some confidence like oh that's what went on there yeah because a lot of times we don't get to hear it they don't hear the backstories and it's, it's I see it and I get frustrated um, I get frustrated because we can't work together yeah and that goes back to that process issue thing like right. something's got to change in the process or that some things stand over and above uh, that party's agenda because they're in power for four years. Mm -hmm. So, but and you've lived through, you know, it's your third election now. So you, yeah. you've seen kind of all the sides. I've seen the, the as in government side, and I've seen the the opposition side. Um, as I stated, I'm probably the least political person, and and I look at the the, the, the territory of Yukon. I think it's Yukon. Hmm. They don't have parties. Yeah. They have. And if you're elected, you get in. This is why I'm afraid that if I say something that you know, <laughs> like. Yeah. I'm very proud to be a liberal, uh, a liberal candidate. Uh, I'm very proud of the people, but I'm also proud of the people who are in the Green Party and in the PC Party and the PA. Uh, I can't say the PA. I'm sorry, um, <laughs> but it's it's just frustrating that I, I, we don't want we shouldn't be tearing us apart. Mm -hmm. The North, the South, the French, the English, the major cities or rural areas. We need someone who's going to bring us all together. Kevin Vickers, uh, I'm not trying to promote him as no, well. No, you but, can't. Like, that's yeah. the point of an election. You, yeah, I, I guess it is. Uh, yeah. but, I, I just, okay. but people are going to say, you know, yeah, he's just because a liberal. But but I've seen it. As, as a former police officer, he, he, he being a former police officer, he brought people together. When they had the issues with the First Nations and the, the, the disputes going on, hmm. um, he brought people together. And, and it wasn't about force. It was about... He brought coffee and Timbits. He, want, he wants to talk. He wants to ed educate on what the issues really are. Mm. And I think that's so important. So if, if we can become a province where we can all work together, no matter who, mm. who's in power, um, and, and it wasn't this all parties committee, um, people were stifled. They, they can't come out of the cabinet rooms and, and tell the public what happened, which I think is wrong. Mm. People need to know what's what goes on behind closed doors. I I think in in somewhat, uh, just to say why did you come to that decision? Um, Premier Higgs, uh, you mentioned to the other candidates, wanted full power. He showed his true colors. Uh, he showed his true colors in the fact that he was going to close emergency ward. He you know he said he wasn't going to, hmm. but when he got the majority or with the, with the uh, People's Alliance, he was going to cut them. Then the people rose up. Especially in the, you know the Sussex area, Perth Andover, St. Yeah. Stephen, they rose up. No, I better I better hold back. So I'm not going to do it. But if he got that total power, there's no doubt in my mind. And even his deputy premier at the time, he knew he was going to close emergency yeah. or, or wards. And we, we can't have that. Um, we need to, we need to work together. And and, if, and I think if, if we had an all party uh, cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, we, we couldn't come up with those. Uh, so if any, anybody talks about a certain item or a certain platform, it would be discussed with them amongst all parties and say, you know what, tweak it here, tweak it there, and that's a good idea. So let's wander a bit about the hospital closures. Let's go mm -hmm. into that because it's a specific and it'll yep. become an election issue, but I want to also push it a bit to the process about how things come to be. So some quick backstory. About four, four years ago, five years ago, I had John McGarry on. He was then the CEO of Horizon yep. Health. Uh, John was wonderful, wandering into we need to close so many hospitals, regional health care delivery model for the province. Um, very articulate, uh, very um, thoughtful but how do you create change in a province that's sort of reluctant to change? This was in late July. 
Um, two weeks later was, and St. Stephen was already announced to be one of the hospitals mm -hmm. to be closed. Media will report it that way. It wasn't you're losing all your services. It was actually going to improve some of the services and certain things are going to go down to St. John. So you got to drive the hour and change to do that. But that part of the message got lost. Uh, the community group surfaces like they always do saying, save our hospital. I'm feeling risk. Um, and then Brian Gallant shows up at the New Brunswick Day weekend saying, I'll save your hospital for you. And then you guys um, win the next election. Mm -hmm. I've well, got that if I've got that right. We didn't win the next election. Uh, we, well, more than already, we stayed in for I think two or three months, and then it okay. didn't work out. So then the Higgs government came in. Uh, no, I'm going back four years. I'm back even before that. 2014, 2018. Yeah. That's, I recall it was New Brunswick Day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so I'm I'm remembering. I'm interviewing okay. John, and two day two weeks later, I'm watching. Mr. Glant in the media saying we're going to save the hospital, mm -hmm. and then shortly after that, um, liberals came into power, which would be a month later, fixed election dates mid-September or something. And then you guys had four years, and the hospital was saved. So okay. those those are the old details, and here we are in the same cycle. Now in other worlds, um, I've had opportunity to listen to different professionals within healthcare saying we need to close six or seven hospitals. Because it ends up uh, centralizing services, you can put better equipment, newer equipment in. Um, yes, the public has to drive a little bit to, you know, an hour here, an hour mm -hmm. there kind of thing. Um, it helps with retention and recruitment of medical professionals because the equipment's better, the facility's better. And in, in the, what happens for 80% of what goes on is uh, community health clinics, which take care of, of things. So th there's a shift that needed to occur, and it gets caught in that four-year election political cycle. And we're doing the same thing again, where Sussex um, wants to save its hospital mm -hmm. and the other ones want to save their hospital. And I'm watching a gap emerge that keeps getting bigger, that it's not like you're losing something. You're actually going to gain something, meaning the healthcare delivery will be better because of new technologies and new approaches. Can, can you wander into that space between political process and election cycles, trying to communicate to public that this is for the greater good? On, on some facilities need to close and be replaced by this. Right. I, I don't uh, recall ever being a part of a, a government that wants to close uh, hospitals. Um, no, and, they saved it. I mean, well, okay, save or close. Uh, yeah, but, but, but somewhere in there, there's the common uh, something needs to shift in healthcare delivery in New Brunswick because the 1960s models of healthcare equates to hospitals. Right. It, it's gone. So, so why, well, my question, I guess, back. If I can, yeah, uh, yeah. why do we need to close the Sussex Hospital? Uh, I think what they were worried about is the ER and, and between, I think, is it midnight and 7 in the morning? Mm -hmm. um, people that's get, what came people, out in the media. Well, anyway. that's what came out in the media. Yeah. So, look, the media, media plays a strong role in uh, <laughs> bubbling people up and getting, churning people up. So let, why not get the, the real facts out there? I agree with you. And let's yeah. educate ourselves. But I would hate to see anybody come to harm between the hours of 12 and yes. 7 o'clock in the morning yeah. because they have to drive an hour and a half or two hours to, to go to a, a bigger hospital. Yeah. And what's going to happen in those bigger hospitals if these other places close, that there's more and more wait times. We have to get rid of the wait times. Um, during this COVID, I guess, the, the wait times have gone down because people aren't running to the hospital with a sore finger or... Yeah. Telecare can take care of a lot of that. Right. So uh, the process, I, 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 I believe that what we have now, could we maintain it? I don't know. I, I've never really looked hard into that aspect of it. I've always been the, either the social development side, the housing, yeah. and or the, uh, the, okay. the public safety side. Okay. So I try to educate myself to make sure that people ask me questions of my, uh, my, my field Skill sets, yeah. for the health the healthcare look. We want people, that's why people come to New Brunswick. Uh, I believe we have good health care. I mean, it, it's got to be better. We need more doctors. And that's okay. why uh, Kevin Vickers talked about nurses. Uh, I had a I had a niece who just graduated as a nurse. And where does she go? She goes to Nova Scotia. We can't compete. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, we need to keep our people here in New Brunswick. And they want to stay. Don't get me wrong. They want to stay. But, and give them full-time jobs, not not contract work, not mm. so, so they can invest in a home, in a family, um, and stay here in our province. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah. I know it's pulling a little bit away from your field, but but that's, it's that's, a narrative that people need to hear because yeah. it's going to go on past this election about how do we transform healthcare so it's more efficient, you get better service, your risk is minimized. Mm -hmm. um, but the regional healthcare model um, is something that will evolve one day. Yeah. So let's get back to more of a comfort zone then. Um, 
we've got two weeks to go. Um, you have a new leader pulling you through an election. Um, sounds like from talking to the other two candidates that the Liberals going back to being liberal, which is which is really interesting because that's a Canadian narrative that's been lost. Um, so what, what do you see as the strengths like moving forward for the next uh, couple of weeks and like what's what's going to be the thing that gets you over the top and back in there for a third time? Are you talking with the party or myself? Um, uh, sort of both, but okay. more, more you. Okay, look, uh, I, I hope people will realize what I've done in the last six years. I've done quite a bit. Uh, being the only, when I was in government, the only, uh, I would say, the strawberry and a blueberry pie. Um, we brought hospice here. Uh, that's just a funny saying. No, it's fun. I can you picture. Know, I'm, I'm like, surrounded uh, by <laughs> all blue and uh, I guess a, a piece of green leaf. Uh, so, um, <laughs> look, I, I was very instrumental in making sure, along with the federal government, Matt DeCourcy at the time, the, the Fredericton Airport. I mean, how long have we been fighting for uh, uh, an expansion of the Fredericton Airport? The rules needed to be changed. The policy needed to be changed at that level. So we pushed that. And we got that here. Um Hospice. Uh, St. John had the only hospice uh, facility in the province. Yeah. Every center should have a hospice. I mean, it yeah. is so important, and we all use that. It, it's it's the last living days of people. Uh, yep. I won't say dying. I'll say living. Yep. Um, uh, the downtown medical center, the roundabout here, the new Shannox on the north side. Uh, people like... Uh, and I, I like I, I love them. Uh, Boyd and Helen McTavish, who ran Joe's Diner for years. I can remember them still telling me, and I'll get probably emotional here, but it's good. they don't want to leave the uh, north side. Yep. And uh, there's more people like Boyd and Helen. Yep. So I was very proud to have spoken with the Shannon family and, and have the new Shannocks here uh, on the north side. And they're going to expand to the other quality of life uh, for independent living. Um, so it's, it's great. Um, the expansion of the hospital came under our government and pushing for the Dr. Everett Chalmers, that expansion you see building now. We need that. Yeah. Uh, the Hanwell Road uh, finally got done. Uh, the Regent Street overpass. Uh, midwifery uh, brought to the north side. Uh, we pushed that, and we were going to expand that throughout the province, but unfortunately we didn't become government, and they're not doing that. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's still here on the north side. I'm very proud of it. It's in, in Fredericton North. And working with our First Nations, uh, I have a great... Um, trust, and I, I'll use the word trust because they, they, people tell me, they trust me that not only was, when I was a police officer, I did my job, but I treated people fairly. Yeah. And uh, they still tell me that today. Uh, Ahas is my native name, I guess, a horse, because I used to run like a horse <laughs> when I, to catch them. But uh, I, I've shown them respect and they've shown me respect. Uh, I, I'm, I'm always uh, up there. Uh, we've, we've worked together and some say, well, that's a federal issue. It's not, it's everybody's issue. Uh, our First Nations community plays a, a huge role in Fredericton North. They are the second, if not the first, uh, employer employer of Fredericton North. I think York Care Center and, and St. Mary's is battling for number one spot. Mm -hmm. um, and they just don't hire First Nations people. They hire uh, outside community to, to work in their establishments. Uh, they provide a great service, and people love that service, especially seniors. Uh, and I might be considered a senior myself, but they, you know, they, they pump your gas, they, they take out your groceries, they, whatever I can do to help you out. Yeah. Um, and, and so much more, like the individuals. Uh, we've helped a young boy who is, um, has autistic and he loves to be outside. Uh, social development had given him a bicycle or a company had given him a bicycle, not social development, a company had given him a bicycle and they took it away after a month. Well, that was his only ways and means of getting outside. Government wasn't going to supply, and I and I fought for that. Uh, I reached out to Stan Cassidy. I reached out to people, but we raised money. The, it wasn't cheap. It was twenty four hundred dollars for this bicycle. So we reached out to the community. Uh, I'm an MLA that goes outside, uh, and and help try to help people, even though it's not government. Hmm. But whatever I can do to help out. Um, so he we got his bicycle for him. Then it helps to the you know people like the sports Fredericton Sports Investment Club. You know they helped, yeah. uh, individuals helped. Um, but it was pushed by uh, an MLA who cares for the people in the in the riding. Uh, and I just want to keep on doing that. Uh, and there's so much we've helped hundreds of people, not just in our riding, but outside. And I'll say, why did you call me? Hmm. And they'll say because my MLA won't do anything. Getting a license back, getting a birth certificate back that's in another province. Um, a chairlift for an individual. I don't know if you saw the new uh, uh, park pad uh, at Nashwaxis Memorial School. Uh, they reached out through this uh, community development uh, 
funds that we could we could disperse of fifty thousand uh, dollars each MLA. Some MLAs on both sides, all parties didn't spend a dime. I'm an MLA that went out into my riding and found out through through uh, any um, company, um, non-profit organizations who needed help. Leo Hayes Farm, Ducks Unlimited, uh, St. Mary, St. Mary's Anglican Church, uh, Park Street School, Nashua Sis Memorial School. Um, there's a church on Clark Street that took over the uh, the hardware store. Uh, they needed some help. Uh, the radio station, Joy Radio Station, they needed help. Uh, so I, I've gone out and I've spent, and plus <laughs> plus more, and, and I'll continue doing that. Uh, I, I don't sit in my office. I I I, 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 I got to be doing something, yeah. and again it comes back to being the neighborhood police officer. I, I want to be seen. I want to be visible. I'll be out in the stores and I'll be out in the community, uh, and and I I if people want to talk with me, they they're more than welcome to come see me. You just gave us an excellent peek to the inside day-to-day -day life of an MLA, which it's, a lot of times that's not a news story. No. So you have no way of getting out. This is what this is what it's like: a month's worth, a year's worth, you know, yeah. six years worth. Uh, I, I'm the only MLA, and I'm very proud to say this. Uh, as you know, I, I buy a red new pair of sneakers every year, and you ask me why. It, it just reminds me of why I get into this. Hmm. I, I get into it to help people, just like I was when I was a police officer. I get into volunteer. I get into help people get housing, get a good a loving home, uh, an employment. Because if you have all that, yeah. I think you have a greater greater society. So if I don't wear out my sneakers, and I walk my riding every <laughs> single year, and I leave something behind at, at their doorsteps mm -hmm. every single year, not just election year, every year. So people say, you know, someone was the only person that came to my door. I go every single year, and I was very lucky to have walked the riding this past year before uh, the pandemic the could really get into all that. Yeah. And, and they've asked us not to go door to door, so we're, we're going on the the health authorities that you know we shouldn't be doing door to door. So um, I was lucky to have already walked the riding. So I'm very proud of that. Um, the only MLA in the province, both sides, all sides. Uh, and I look, I, I realize that I live in a a, a smaller riding, mm -hmm. which I can do that. Yep. But there's other people too uh, that could do that as well, but but they don't. Yeah. Um, I want to wander into a, a specific. And then, uh, and and we'll just see where it goes. Sure, that's good. Um, and it ties back to the previous conversations with RPC putting out their model of uh, here's all the mining opportunities um, in the province, and then I can show a map of here's all the waterways in the province, and you put the two on top of each other, and you know there's, I don't want to say conflict, but it's going to be a challenge to get all of this sort of uh, manufacturing industrial development to drive the economy. Um, as opposed to how do we protect the environment mm. so that it's here for the 120 years. So those are two givens. So the the dance is what happens in between and how we how we kind of get there. If that if that makes sense, it's, yeah. pr it's process stuff. Now we have a specific example outside of Fredericton with the Myra Quarry thing where is that the precursor for the Sisson mine or what happens down in, you know, for how that's there and what that community is coping with, um, the busyness all down the Royal Road past the school and, mm -hmm. and Windsor uh, Court and, and, you know, 500 trucks a day. Yeah. Because um, there's a validity to, okay, you need to have a quarry because Fredericton's growing and you need to come up with the rock. Um, there's a validity to the Nashwalk watershed and mm -hmm. protecting turtles. And somewhere in that decision-making process, something seems to have been lost somehow. Yep. A transparency or an accountability or something. And then there's been no compensation for the people. That, usually when industry moves into a residential or rural area, there's a, an attempt at some compensation so people can opt out. And then that wasn't part of it. So here's a provincial view of economic development. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then here's a provincial view of environmental sustainability. And those two themes will play out in the legislature. And here's a specific example of where that's right now not, it's not a happy place. Yeah. Um, can you speak into that space? Sure. Now? And I'll, I want to start right at the beginning. Uh, it was the PC government between 2010 and 2014 that okayed that Myra, Myra Corey out the mm -hmm. Royal Road. Mm -hmm. uh, we had just come in. Uh, so that paperwork was already done. They did their studies. They did their whatever they needed to do. Mm. Uh, and they, they okayed the Myra so we came in 2014 to 2018. Mm. Uh, we we've been dealing with that ever since. And look, how can you how can you give a company something like Myra Construction uh, the okay and, and start their uh, construct or their demolition or yeah. rock and you know the dust and mud and yeah and then all of a sudden halt it. Yep. I, I, it's like it's like trying to hold back the wind. Uh, you you can't. Yep. So 
you have to work together. Um, so compensation. So they they water the road, they pay the road. So there's there's less and less dust. I, I don't know. Yeah. So what I meant by compensation was the homeowners, because you right. know the property values have dropped by seventy thousand yep. on one hundred eighty thousand. Yeah. Yep. So. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure if you want me to make promise. I can't. No, I can't no, no. I'm not. Saying, yeah. Look. No, uh, no, no. I'm just trying to talk about something should have been done. Yeah. So like it's done now. So it's like yeah. how do you do reparations? Because yeah. it, it's like when Charles Murray was on and we got talking about this a bit. Because Charles, as the ombudsperson, person, wanders into all these cracks yeah. and spaces. He said, "Yeah, the process could have been better." Yeah. Um, so, but he said well, it's like a rock rolling downhill. Once it starts, you're not going to be able to stop That's the thing. Right. So then that leads to the next question is, so how do how does a government um, make it better for those residents that are having the rock <laughs> roll yeah. down the hill on them and moving forward? Because this in mind is going to come up because there's people with a belief like Herb Emery and, and the rest that we need to do more industrial development in order mm -hmm. to help New Brunswick's economics. And, and that's an old theme, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so how, how do we get at that? Um, so that when industry does move into a rural area and changes the municipal plan for it, and uh, that the community that's always been there for 30 or 40 yeah. or 60 years, yeah. and then can it work backwards to apply to give some sort of help to the people that have lived in, in uh, Royal Road area just outside of town? And I, it, I, it's coming, you know. I don't yeah, want to. No. I don't want to paint it as a conflict. I want to no, paint no. it as what's the solution to yeah. this? So I think the solution was would be right from the beginning is to consult with the community better. Mm -hmm. um, to say that this is what's going to take place. How can we help you uh, keep your properties at the value that they are? How can we uh, keep down the, the dust or the trucking traffic mm -hmm. to keep people safe? Mm -hmm. That should have been all done in the beginning. And I think with the CIS in mind, I thought at the beginning, uh, working with our First Nations, that uh, they signed an agreement uh, of $2.5 million to look, this is this is not to, not to that is coming, yeah, yeah. but uh, to, to, to look at it. Yeah. And, and to be a part of the issue. Uh, so First Nations, the community, the environmentalist, um, that all has to be done at the front end. Hmm. Um, at any major project, I think it should be done at the front end. Hmm. Even here at the uh, Queen Square uh, area, <laughs> that wasn't done. And that should have been done at the front end. If, if it's done at the front end, uh, I think projects, if they get the okay by, by the community, hmm. It, it would run smoother. Well, it's a consensus model as opposed it, it, to I'm in power to, and we're yeah, going to make no, this look, happen. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And and I've never been a part of uh, ramming things through. It's always been about consulting hmm. and let's taking a look at. I'll use the front license plates again. Why aren't we talking to the chiefs of police? Yeah. Why, why aren't we talking to uh, uh, grocery store owners who yeah. didn't want that as well? Because uh, yeah. those are the ones who are really people who are being affected by it. So it has to be done at the front end to make sure that we're all on the same page. And if it's a good thing, it's a good thing. If it's, uh, you know, we don't want it. Uh, the, and I think the last people who should have the major decision is not government. It should be the people of that community. Mm -hmm. And and. And I'll this, tell you one, just getting on that, so when we were in government, they wanted another rock quarry over there. Yeah. And the community came to us and said, look, we don't want it, so we, we consulted with them, and it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Coulters wanted to bring a, another rock quarry over beside this other rock quarry, yeah. Myers rock quarry, and we said no, yeah. Yeah. because the community said no. Yeah. Is there any opportunity for, you know, we get through the election, and, and this isn't going to go away. No. Um, and it counts as a specific example that then can be applied as a process to other places. So the consultation at the front end, more transparent, um, is good. That then begs, um, it's so hard to reach consensus. For no, some no, people, no. You know, yeah, that's right. You're so not going to make we, everybody happy. We have to wander into that space because the other version is um, I'm in power and this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and that doesn't work anymore. Maybe 1960, 1980, but... Uh, there's a different thing happening now for people and communities and ownership, which gets the municipal reform again and, okay, and yeah. all, all that weave. But is there a chance for that particular group? Because it can become an example of a reparation. That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. So if it kind of went in the wrong way because someone knew someone and then this goes down quickly and boom, and now the community has to live with it. Is there some way to show, okay, that got off on the wrong foot from the get-go and it's still on the wrong foot so we can fix it this way. So give them some sort of a buyout opportunities so they can leave with some sort of dignity even yeah. though it's 60 years of living there or 50. Um, the water because that's the third largest aquifer I think. It is. So there's a whole issue around that and some of the people have now had their water tested and it's contaminated mm -hmm. with manganese um, but you can't 
legally document that it's connected to the quarry, but the only thing that's changed is, is the, the quarry. quarry. Um, so they're stuck. So if they could be an example of how to make things better when it got messed up, mm -hmm. then that will give people confidence moving forward on the large scale decision making for any other future projects. 100%. And, and why do we, you know, is, you say it's coming, but why maybe it doesn't have to come. We have, we have a, a, a lot of uh, opportunities here in New Brunswick, not just because of mining. Oh, no. We, we yes. have, you know, fishing, we have uh, tidal wave, we have clean air, <laughs> we have windmill, we have, I mean, maybe, maybe the, the mining is, is passe. Yep. I, I don't know. For, uh, there's, there's know. many, many things other than mining that can pr pr prosperity, uh, you know, give yeah. us our prov yeah. province prosperity, uh, cybersecurity. Yeah. Um, let's uh, think of something else, uh, you know, our fishery industry, our, our yeah. lumber industry, uh, uh, the mill that that uh, use you know from wood to fiber to send it. I mean, yeah. there's so much in New Brunswick other than just mining. You know, it never seems to come up. And thank you for that because it just sparked a, an interesting turn. Um, we're a province of 750, 760,000 people. 760,000 people. Yeah. Like, how much economy do we need to be satis satisfied or um, self-sufficient? Yeah. You know, we're not self-sufficient on our food. I mean, yeah. that's pretty clear. So it, it's always like billions and billions of people, but we're a, a suburb somewhere else. Yeah. So do we need it to do that scale? Yeah. Or is there another way which you invited by saying that? No, 100%. And I'll take Irving Oil, for example. Most of the product that uh, we, we do here in New Brunswick is, is shipped it's elsewhere. Good. Yeah. So let's focus on what we're going to do to, to sustain New Brunswick first. first. Uh, farming land, you just talked about. And I was very proud of the government and the Gallant government at the time said, look, we're not going to go below a certain percentage of land for farmlands. Mm -hmm. uh, growing our population with newcomers. Uh, they love farming. They know they're, they're an expertise of farming. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's give them the opportunity. Harvey's down here at the road, uh, Harvey's potato field. Uh, I think that was a prime example of Mr. Harvey wanting to say, look, I've done my time, uh, <laughs> but we didn't want to see that property become a, a, a pit or a, yeah. a housing project. Or It's farmland. It's great farmland. Yeah. So let's keep it as farmland and let's see what we can do to, to help our, our food productivity stay here in New Brunswick and be a year-long thing uh, with greenhouses or whatever we yes. need to do. And, and there's people who would love to do that and have the, and have the knowledge to do that. Yeah. So we should be looking at that. Yes, uh, change the scale, and you have more regional autonomy. Uh, no, 100%. Look, that. yeah. Good. This is great. Thank you for no, wandering I, I, into I, those spaces. I appreciate it. And to be honest with you, I was always uh, skeptical, and I, that's, that's not the right word. Uh, hesitant. Hesitant, yeah. Like, <laughs> because when you do get in front of a camera, oh, yeah. uh, I, I love it that it's, it's a conversation. And I've done interviews before where the microphone is shoved in your face and uh, and because I mispronounce a word, I, I've been ridiculed by it. I mean, mm. that's not the way it should be. I should be, I should be, hey, Dennis, would you like to talk to me again and uh, Just come down and, and come down? Yeah. Uh, so thank you. So how do you want to send us out? What, what's your final thoughts for this election and, and for... It's, Frederick North has always been a tough riding. Mm. Um, I've won, I think, by 145 the first time I, th I think it was 145 or even 45. I, I don't know. Mm. Uh, the second time by less than 300. Mm. This is a tough riding. Uh, we have a diverse uh, community. Uh, it's, it is a community. It's, it's more of uh, <laughs> where people live and not work. Um, so I, I would like to hope people think of what I've done in the past. I've always been accessible. If you called me, I called you back. And if anybody says that they uh, that I didn't call them back, they either called the wrong number, or they're not saying the truth. Uh, and if you wanted to meet with me, I met with you. I, I when I was minister of social development, uh, the department always used to say, "You're the only minister that they've ever seen meet with everybody." And I stuck up for the department. I, I know you heard uh, Nicole here a while ago uh, talking about the civil, the civil service, and they don't get the credit. I used to give them all the credit uh, because it's not me. I come and go, ministers come and go, but they stay there. And I didn't ever want to run a department. Um, I wanted to help them. Um, but I got my hand slapped a couple of times because when someone needed help, I went to the person who could help that person. I didn't go through the deputy minister to the assistant deputy minister. I went directly to the person who could help me. And I used, but that's just the way I was. Uh, I wanted to help the person. And I didn't want to take it months and days to, it should be taken immediately because in life my father used to say there's always something coming so get what you have to do done today because again you don't want to keep on compounding um 
I love my community. My family, the Sewells and the Neils here, Neils Farm and, and Sewells have the South Devon Fuel Company. Um, I'm very proud to have policed this, uh, this neighborhood for most of my policing career, working with the First Nations community of St. Mary's, um, having their respect, uh, and I respect the First Nations. I have a niece who's First Nation, uh, Cree. I have uh, my godson who's Maliseet. My best friends are, I play hockey with Ronnie Francis and his family in Kingsclear. I grew up in Ormukdo. Um, so I am someone who will always be around and work hard for the people. Um, I, know, I know other people are saying that they haven't heard their voice. Or, look, I, I'll never put anybody down to me to, 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 go, to go higher. I will never do that. And I see politics can be a tough game. It, it's a mean game and people become mean. Uh, people don't know who I am. So when I park my <laughs> RV, which is my mobile office, yep. um, and we don't have uh, a bubbled car, or like most people have a bubble wrap car, we have it all in one. It's costing us less money. Yep. Uh, and I think we can go to the community. And so it's an innovative way to uh, yep. with what's going on with the pandemic and it's working very well. But for people to go by and you know, give you the bird or you don't know me come see me come talk to me uh and if you have issues look i, I get it if people want to go that way or this way i get that and uh but I, I want people to to remember what i have done for them and what i have done for my community uh, i think i've done a lot of great things for the Fredericton area and uh, especially Fredericton north and I, I just want to continue doing that thank you no thank you thanks for watching be good have fun love each other